Okay, let's move on to 3.3. Okay. So let's look at 3.3. So 3.3 is got like quite a lot of tables in it, but let's just not panic and just look through the scenario. So it says, Franco noted that not all the students pass the examinations. That always happens. Table two and table three show information regarding the same group of students that sat for the examinations. All students that failed attempted the examinations again. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so then it says table two below shows information regarding the percentage of students that passed or failed the examination. So the first attempt, 80% failed, 20% passed, 70% failed on the second attempt, and 30% passed. So you see here, this always adds up to 100%, right? Because 100% basically accounts for all the students that wrote. If it doesn't add up to 100%, I don't know what happened to some of the students. They just went a little bit, maybe they just were absent or something like that. Okay, so give a possible reason why the probability of passing increased after the first attempt. So do you see it went from 20% to 30%? Okay, so there could be numerous reasons why that happened, right? It could be they were better prepared or they were more serious about it the second time or like there's many things. So you could literally, this is one of those ones where like there's lots of answers you could say. You could say they were... Um, better prepared the second time, right? Um, put in more hours, lots of stuff. Like there's loads of things you could say there, but it, it only says one possible reason. So you could say either of those, okay? So there's not too much maths there, just a little bit of applying our mind, okay? So table three below, here we go shows the actual numbers of students listed in table two. So remember, in table two, it gives us the percentage, but in table three, it gives us the absolute numbers, right? The actual number of students. So then it says some values have been omitted, okay? They've left out A, B, C, and D, okay? So it says determine, showing all calculations, so we can't just be sucking things out of our thumbs, okay? The missing values A, B, C, and D to calculate the total number of students that passed after both attempts. Okay, so... What's important, right, is we would expect the number of people who did the second attempt, right, to be less than the number of people who did the first attempt. But let's just check, right? So we know for the first attempt, let's just start. So the first attempt, right, we have passing or failing. Okay, we know that 20% passed and 80% failed. Okay, but from this table, what we also know is that this 20% actually represents 24 people. Okay, so we have to figure out what A is. Okay, how many people failed. Now, a way of doing this, right, is we could say what is the ratio of 20% to 80%? Okay, the number of people who passed to the number of people that failed. Okay. And if we divide both of these by 20%, we get the ratio as 1 to 4. Okay, remember when we do something to one side of a ratio, we must always do the same thing to the other side of the ratio. So we get here 1 to 4. So if 20% equals 24 people, right? So this is 24 people. What is it going to equal that side? Right, that's what we're trying to figure out. So to get from 1 to 24, sorry, I'm just about to sneeze. Ooh. Mm, nope, no sneeze. Okay, right? We get from, to get from 1 to 24, we have to multiply by 24, don't we, right? But remember, when we do ratios, what you do to the one side, you always do to the other side because we have to conserve the ratio, okay? So what is 4 times 24? That equals 96 people, right? So that is the value of A. If you don't believe me, just type that into your calculator and you'll see that it's 96 people. So A equals 96 people, okay? But if we look over here, we see that B is the total, right? So B would be the sum of those who pass and, then, and those who fail, okay? So we know that B equals A plus 24, which equals 96 plus 24, okay, which equals 122 people. 
Okay, so what we've done here, which is really cool, is we have calculated, right? We have calculated the value of A already and the value of B. So we've done two of the letters out of the four. Hold a second, I just need to quickly get some exam pad so that we can carry on. Okay, let me just move that up. Okay, I'm just going to move that so that we can still see that a little bit. Okie dokes. Okay, so now we need to get C and D. Okay, so I'm going to look at D before C, right? Because C is just a sum of D and 67, right? So let's try find D. So now we're looking at the second attempt. Okay, and the second attempt, the number of people or the percentage of people that passed was 30%. Okay, and the number of people that failed was 70 percent we see that there okay so now we know the number of people that failed is 67 people sorry i keep writing so hard i must be a little bit more gentle okay and this 30 percent is d okay so we know that this 70 percent represents 67 people and now we need to work out what the 30 percent represents okay so let's do a similar thing to what we did before we say Pass, the ratio of passes to fails is 30 to 70. Okay, now let's try to get this into a slightly simpler form. Let's divide it by 10%. So we get 3 to 7. Okay, remember what I do to the one side, I must always do to the other. Okay, so my ratio is 3 to 7. But we know that the number of people that failed is 67 people. Okay, so we have to figure out how we can get from 7 to 67. And whatever, we know we're going to have to multiply, right? We're going to have to multiply it by something to get to 67. And whatever that thing is, we have to do it to the 3 as well. Now, it's not immediately obvious what we have to multiply 7 by to get 67. So, let's say, right, we say 7 times by something, I'm just going to put a little question mark, equals 67. So, this something is going to equal 67 divided by 7. Okay. Now, you could be thinking, Margs, why is it divided by 7 over here? Remember with bod mass, right? With bod mass, right? You have division is the opposite of multiplication and addition is the opposite of subtraction. So, if it is multiplied on this side, if we want to get rid of it, we have to divide both sides by 7 which is what I did, right? And that will give us an answer. Okay, so now we say 67 divided by 7 to find what that something is that we have to times it by. And we see, I'm just going to keep it in fraction form, right? Which is not very helpful. But if we put it into multiples, we see that that question mark equals 9.5714. Okay, so we know that we have to multiply that 7 by this number, right? to get 67. So whatever we multiply 7 by, we also have to multiply 3 by to conserve the ratio, okay? And this amount here is D, remember that. So D is going to equal 3 times this number here, 9.5714. Okay, so let's put that into our calculator. So we're just going to times it by 3, and that's going to be 28. Point seven one four two eight five seven one. Now, we cannot have weird decimals when it comes to people. You don't get seven oh, point seven one four two eight five seven one of a person, right? A person is either a whole person or they don't exist. Okay, there's no in between. Okay, even if we sometimes feel like we're in between, there's nothing in between. Okay, right? You are always a person. So we have to round this off. So if we round this off, it is twenty nine people. Okay, so D is 29 and 67 is the number that failed. Okay, so 29 passed the second time and 67 failed. Okay, so now we have got A, we've got B, we've got D, and we know that C equals um, 67 plus D, which is 67 plus 29, and we can put that into our calculator. 67 plus 
is 96 people. Okay, so what's really interesting here, right, which is what I made a comment about earlier, is do you see that the number of people that failed the first time, right, is the number of people that wrote the second time. So instead of doing this whole shindig that we did over here, you could have said, well, we know, right, from the question. The question actually said to us, do you see here? It says, uh, what does it say? It says... Um, below numbers and this is, it did say in the question, let me just quickly check there, all students that failed attempted the examinations again, all students, right? So we know, right, that all the students that failed the first time rewrote the second time, okay? So you could have just said, okay, we know that 96 failed the first time and 96 wrote the second time and we know that 67 of them failed, therefore you could have just said, 96 minus 67, which gives us 29 people who passed. Okay, so I showed you a really long way because you might not have actually seen that in the question, which is okay. You can do lots of different ways. This would have taken you a little bit longer, but you still would have got to the same answer. Okay, so this is just an important one to think about. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky, but it's actually not too bad. Okay, so that's 3.3. .3. And we are flying through this paper. We're going on to 3.4 next.